This week on the Pete the Planner Show, we're doing something fun. As opposed to the last 10 years of the show, we're going to do one topic, the whole show. It is my very popular USA Today column, a four-part series that I, in the midst of wrapping up, it's how to be 50 years old uh, and broke and still have a beautiful, wonderful, positive financial outcome at retirement. Uh, That was a beep, and that is Nicole joining me on the show. Hello, Nicole. Hello. So you understand what we're doing this week? I do. There's four parts. we got four segments. It works out wonderfully. Yes, it does. Uh, Let me give some context. Context is important. (laughs) Okay. A few weeks ago, uh, I I met with talking to this 50-year-old woman, and she said, I'm broke. I don't know what to do. I'm a little scared. Uh, The way I see it, i got 20 years left to go. I was like, okay, okay, cool. You know, I hear these stories all the time. People tell me yeah. stuff. I'm like a, I'm like a financial priest. Please tell me <laughs> stuff, man. And so she told me that. I was like, all right, fine. A couple days later, this dude talking to him. He's like, yeah, I'm about 50, but he goes, you know, I got nothing. I was like, oh, okay, well, this is a little weird. It's getting a little weird. Then Nicole, the next day, I met two people. Both people told me they're 50 and they got nothing. And I thought, wait, that's a trend. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know about trends. You're a millennial. I, yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. So that's a trend. And I was like, okay, so this seems to me anecdotally in my week or two-week period, there's a bunch of 50-year-olds running around that are broke and no one's helping them. Right? Because here's who the financial services industry typically targets. You can hear this on commercials or print advertisements or advertisements as some people call them do you like when people call them advertisements i don't think i've ever really yes oh i hear it all the time i hate it anyway they (laughs) target people with money if you're 50 and you're broke no one wants to help you no except me now i I, look i want to help you but i've got nothing to sell you but here's so here's what we're doing today we are putting together a plan for you if you're 50 and you're broke now if you're younger than 50 and you're thinking Oh, this show will just show me how I can live it up, spend all my money until I'm 50, and then start over. Shame on you. Shame on you. That's not what we're doing. But if you happen to be 50 or around 50 and you're broke, I'm going to help you today. Enough of the setup. Is that enough context, Nicole? Yeah, that was a good setup. I liked it. we got to break this down into four areas, okay? So this first segment, (laughs) I need the next two years of your life. That's what I need. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's quite the commitment. Yeah, but you're 50 and broke. Like, you had what about, else do you have to lose? Yeah, you had about right. 30 years to have some money at this point in time. You don't, and that's not judgmental. That no. sounded sassy, like I'm sassing you. I'm not. A little sassafras? Yeah, I'm not sassing them, Frank, because here's the thing. Life happens. Yeah. And I would not waste an ounce of your time saying, uh, well, this is why I'm broke at 50. And I don't care. And In fact... It's none of my business. Now, if you think uh, going retrospectively into your past and, and trying to find why it happened so it would motivate you to make some changes for the future, good on you. Do it. Otherwise, don't waste your time. But here's what I need from you in the next two years. First thing. Oh, oh by the way, uh, this entire segment, uh, this entire show, I'm going to base it on the premise of your household income is $60,000. Okay? You're 50. Fair. Your household income is $60,000. Does that seem fair? Yes. I think it is. Uh, so and, 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 and so you're $60,000. I need you to begin the operation here today by saving at least 5% of your income towards your company-sponsored retirement plan. Now, if you don't have a company-sponsored retirement plan, then you need to do that on your own in like a Roth mm-hmm. IRA or something. Yeah. Okay? Um, Ideally, your employer is matching, which sort of the the average match is about 3%, Frank. Mm -hmm. So that means if you're putting in 5%, they're putting in 3%. That means 8% of your income as of tomorrow when you make these changes (laughs) is going towards your retirement. And and we're not just talking about saving. We're talking about investing. This money has to, some risk needs to be involved with it. It needs to be invested. And so again, you're 50. We're trying to get you to retire at 70. You have nothing. Right. We're, we're trying to craft financial independence in 20 years, which is incredibly difficult to do. But we're going to do it. We're going to do it. So we start in the first two years. Tomorrow, you start by, um, by all means, making sure you've got 5% going into your account, uh, your retirement account. Next step. <clears throat> this, is, this is actually the hardest part until the next segment. <laughs> you have to pay off all of your debt in the next two years. And you're like, what? No, who did the what? 
You don't have to, but ideally, if you have consumer debt, so non uh, non uh, mortgage, yep, non student loan. If it's your student loans, I'd like it paid off. If it's your kids' student loans, then we'll deal with that later. But if you have credit card debt or medical bills or little things hanging over your head, try to get out of the debt in the next two years. And, and I can hear you right now. You're thinking, well, how can I do that? Well, we'll get there. But the point is this. You're going to have to ask yourself, what needs to change right. in order for you to pull off a successful retirement in just 20 years? That's a really hard thing to do. And what needs to happen is you need to eliminate your obligation to your financial past. Uh, Nicole, uh, we talk about a lot on this show and everywhere else. What is mm-hmm. your financial past? Yeah. <clears throat> it is your debt. Yeah. Right? So if you're in a debt, that means you have a past. And, and, and the only way you can eliminate that is to pay off your debt. So for the first two years, first 24 months, from 50 to 52, tomorrow you start the first part. You put at least 5% of your uh, income into your company-sponsored retirement plan and allow the match to take you to 8% total. If you don't have one of those McGillicuddy's, uh, just put something in a Roth IRA, about 5%. Oh, to 8%, doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, the second thing you need to do is put together a plan to systematically pay off your debt. I happen to like the momentum method of paying off debt. It's a favorite. It is my favorite. It is. It's where you list all of your debts from the smallest balance down to the largest balance. You pay minimum payments on every single one of your debts, except the smallest balance debt. Now, I do need to make a note before we move on to break and then get into the next segment. As you're thinking about this and you're hearing about this entire show today, maybe you are 50 and you're broke and you're like, ah, I wish I had a second chance. This is your second chance. But, but you also have to understand something. It may quickly occur to you that you don't earn enough income to try to pull off what we're pulling off. You may even make $60,000 a year, and based on the level of debt you have, you don't think you can pay off that debt within the next two years. I got a really strange message for you, but it's very truthful. (laughs) Get a second job. And again, this is me not being Tuffy McTufferson. Like, this is, I'm being (laughs) pragmatic. You have to increase your income to get this done. Now, by the way, as we always talk on this show, anytime you get a second source of income, you must give that new job a job. What I mean is you must uh, look at the dollars coming in from that second job and specifically assign a task to it. If you do not do that, that second job will be the worst thing you've ever done because you will group more money into your life. It will increase your lifestyle. And when that second job goes away, you will be too dependent on money you don't have and you will be angry. Maybe even hangry. Ooh, I was hangry. hunger involved. I was, I was hangry. hangry earlier today. I get hangry, yeah. That's a big thing in my life. It's okay, so, so far, Nicole, again, just to recap, we're trying to get people to retire mm-hmm. um, in 20-year period who are broke at 50. Like, I'm talking about nothing. Like, if yeah. there's a lot of 50-year-olds that are running around out there with nothing because of divorce, because of they raised 30 kids. I, they, there's all sorts of reasons why you don't have any money at 50. And a lot of industry statistics suggest a lot of 50-year-olds have nothing. And by the way, if you have more than nothing, this is still a good plan for you. I should define nothing. This is where this is going to get uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you're 50, oh, man, this is going to get really uncomfortable. I didn't realize this was going to happen. Uh-oh. I would have made turned this into a drinking episode. Uh. Are you ready for this? This is bold. I didn't even say this in my column. No, I don't know. If you have less than $100,000 in assets and you're 50, I'm, I'm calling that nothing. See how uncomfortable that felt? Yeah. Because you people, silenced me. Well, that rarely yeah, happens. I know. Here's the thing, though. You're not, I guess, let's put it this way. You're very off track towards retirement if you're 50 and you have less than $100,000. Now, that $100,000 will help us in our plan to get you on track. But even less than $100,000 and you're 50, this show is for you. Coming up after the break, how to retire successfully when you're 50 and broke. That's next on the Pete the Planner Show. I'm Pete the Planner. 